Hello everyone, welcome back to another interesting video that is CML. Do you know what is CML? If not, stay tuned till the end and watch this interesting video. CML CML is nothing but chronic myeloid leukemia. Whenever you hear the term chronic in leukemia, Remember that in chronic leukemias, the cells are usually mature when comparatively to the acute leukemia, but they are still dysfunctional. They have no functional value. Blast cells, the myeloid blast cells, these are less than 10% in, blast, in bone marrow. Now, if you remember in acute myeloid leukemia, that is in acute myeloid leukemia, there was more than 20% of blast cells. I hope you remember that there was more than 20% of blast cells. Whereas uh, this CML, it mostly affects people of elder age that is 40 years plus are usually affected. And the risk factor of developing this chronic myeloid leukemia is radiation. Let's come to the causes of why this actually chronic myeloid leukemia occurs. This chronic myeloid leukemia, this type of cancer occurs when a very specific mutation happens. There is chromosome 22 where the there is it is also called as BCR gene and the chromosome 9 which is also the ABL gene. What here happens is there is translocation of these two and that leads to the mutation. This new protein is a type of receptor tyrosine kinase that causes division without control. Now this new type of chromosome which is seen that's called the Philadelphia chromosome. If you remember there is pluripotent hematopoietic stem cell in the bone marrow which leads to the formation of many other types of cells such as monocytes, basophils, eosinophils, neutrophils, erythrocyte, platelets and many other. But these leukocytes are more present in excess number in the chronic myeloid leukemia. Signs and symptoms of CML Now in signs and symptoms actually in chronic myeloid leukemia we come across three phases chronic phase, accelerated phase and the blast crisis. Now what happens is one by one we will go through it. In chronic phase, 90% of the patients are usually asymptomatic. That means they show no signs and symptoms. What happens later is due to the excessiveness of cells, what really happens in our abdomen is that the spleen which causes splenomegaly and also hepatomegaly due to the excess production and production of WBCs. So that will lead to the abdominal fullness. Now fever is also seen in chronic phase but this fever is due to the increased number of WBCs in the and also the basic met, basal metabolic rate is also increased. Accelerated phase itself the name suggests that there is acceleration there is speeding up. So here there is more rapidly making of the defected cell that means the division is uncontrolled and the production is happening at a more faster pace. Now what happens here is even uh, like due to platelet dysfunction uh, there might be bleeding and it can be uh, seen in the form of petechiae and ecchymosis. And there might be also fever might be seen. Now this fever is due to the opportunistic infection. Because of uh, dysfunctional WBCs, our body cannot withstand inf uh, infection and that will lead to fever. Now the third part is the blast crisis. Now rapid immature cell, here itself the blast crisis itself suggests that there is like crisis. There is rapid immature cell production and what happens is because of this rapid immature cell production that leads to bone pain because there are more number of myeloblasts in the bone marrow. And again you can also see fever and this fever might be either due to increased WBC or opportunistic infection. Now we come to the diagnosis of CML. 
Whenever we see there is increased number of WBCs, which really shows that up to more than fifty thousand to two hundred thousands of WBCs. Whenever we do the peripheral blood smear, we usually get to see the leukocytosis. Now there is a specific test which is FISH test, which is nothing but the fluorescent in situ hybridization test. What here happens is this test is responsible. It shows up or it glows up the Philadelphia chromosome, which can be seen in ninety five percent of the cases. The bone marrow aspiration, which is a very painful process. Usually, they puncture, uh, they put puncture through in with the needle and aspirate the bone marrow, and they test that. And usually, uh, we see there is increased myeloblast in the bone marrow aspiration. and we come to the treatment part usually because of excessive plate because of platelet and other cell uh, increase mass production we they usually hydroxyurea interferon alpha are used whereas there is one thing such as uh, imatinib this blocks the receptor when we talked about the uh, chromosome philadelphia what this imatinib usually does is it's block the receptors and it doesn't allow this to produce it. if this philadelphia chromosome leads to signaling that will cause more division now if imatinib will go and it will block it in such a way that it will not allow this philadelphia chromosome uh, to activate so does indulge this might there might be a cure to cml and last we can uh, to after this we can also do a stem cell transplantation so so that the proper cells are produced thank you for watching the video meet you in the next video